All right, guys, so the thing we're going to be talking about in this video is the product listing. Now, is the product listing the most important thing you're listing? Is it more important than your, your pictures and your title, uh, maybe your bullet points and things like that? Probably not, but is it still something we need to take care of and not completely ignore 100%? And this is basically what I see a lot of people doing, is just neglecting and kind of ignoring their product description. When that's still part of your listing, it's gonna help you rank, it's gonna help you sell your product, it's gonna help you explain your key features in more detail, and you need to capture the customer's attention to allow you to do that. So. Let's have a look at this person's listing here to see what they've done with their product description, which is basically killing their conversion rate. So as you can see here, they've got a very detailed product description. There's nothing wrong with that. I'm sure they have loads of keywords in there. They have loads of data about their products. They have um, huge selling points and things they want to draw attention to that's not already in their, um, in their images and their bullet points and their title. They're going to go into more detail in their product description. Now, obviously, they don't have A plus contents. They can't include pictures and um, graphics in their description, which is completely fine. I'm sure most of you watching don't have that. But one very simple thing they could do to greatly improve the look of their product description, really draw a customer's attention and make someone want to read this, is include some HTML code. Now, I'm going to show you what HTML code is, what it does, how to use it, um, and basically everything you need to know about it later on in the video. But first of all, I want to cover why it's so important because to me just as a customer from a customer's perspective not as someone who's selling on amazon when i'm scrolling through this listing i'm not going to stop and read the product description now i'm sure many shoppers anyway they don't really stop and read the product description they probably look at the pictures the title they might even maybe look at a couple of the bullet points um, and especially the reviews before making their purchase and a lot of people just normally scroll over the product description they don't normally read it um, depending on the product so it's almost in a way it's your job to make them read their product description to make it look like something they need to be reading and to me like Amazon is a very quick buying experience. You go there to buy something, you get what you need, you get out. You don't really sit there for the fun of it, reading the description and things like that, unless you're really into selling products like myself. But most customers aren't going to be reading this. You need to make it apparent to them that there's vital information about your product in here that they need to know before they buy it. And to me, just looking at this, I'm not going to want to read this massive paragraph about um, a foam roller. It's just not really that appealing to me. So let's look at some listings who have taken advantage of HTML code and why that looks different and why it might hopefully make a customer want to read that product description. So this is the first one I've got here where they've used some HTML code. Now there is still more they could use in this. They could still use things like emojis. They could like underline, they could use italics. They could definitely draw more attention to this if they wanted to, but compared to this over here, compared to just a big paragraph, this is a lot more condensed information, a lot more digestible for a customer to come down and read very quickly and understand. He's almost bullet pointed um, his product description. Now, obviously you can see here, physical therapy, how to use, texture surface, stay fit, product catalog. I would still kind of do this differently. I would have these main points as a main point that customers actually want to know. So like high quality materials, um, value for money, things like that, rather than just the title's not really telling you that much and then actually having to read below to understand what that bit is. He's still not doing the best job of his product description, but again, it's much better than just having a block paragraph there. So I've got another example here. So if we scroll down to this person's product description, they've also used HTML code to just break up their um, their product description a bit to make the customer want to read it. Now, again, this person still hasn't done the best job of including underlines, including all the detail, including all of these things. There's still a, a great deal of content someone can include in this. And I'm gonna actually give you a top tip that I use in my product description later on at the end of this video, which I've actually found to be very, very successful for me. I'm um, competing against some competitors that um, may not be doing the same thing and may not be um, entitled really to do the same thing. So now you know exactly what HTML code is. You've seen some examples of it where it's not used and some examples of where it's used, but maybe not to the best of its abilities. So now let's go ahead and look at how we can actually use HTML code to the maximum of its potential and what the code is, how you use it, all those kind of things. So to kick things off of how to use HTML code, I wanna quickly cover why it's so important um, for people who aren't actually shopping on a computer. Now, personally, myself, I do a lot of shopping on my computer. If I buy anything from Amazon, it's normally from the Mac, but a lot of people don't do that. I'm sure, I don't know the exact statistic, but I know it's a huge amount of people, maybe more than 50%, actually shop using their phone. And 
as product descriptions are kind of halfway down the page when you're shopping online on a computer and the main thing is your title and bullet points that isn't actually the case when you're shopping on your phone your description is actually ahead of your bullet points and this is what it looks like for my phone when i'm shopping on amazon um, for these exact same products okay so you can see that the product in the middle here is the product that didn't have any HTML code. And that's just a lot of text, especially on your phone. That's gonna take up your entire screen just with massive, massive amounts of text. No customer is gonna stop and read all of that, in my opinion. I know I wouldn't, I don't know anyone personally who would do that, but compared to the images on the left and right of this middle picture, you can see the people who are using HTML code who have broken up a little bit, where hopefully some of that might actually catch a customer's eye as they're scrolling down to get to the reviews. Because especially on a phone, you can't just quickly scroll down like you can um, on a Mac and just quickly whiz past everything and get to the reviews. You normally actually have to scroll with your thumb slower um, to actually get to the reviews. And you have to go past this product description, which hopefully will catch a customer's eye. If you're using HTML code, if you're using bold, italics, underlined, emojis, all these types of things that can really draw a customer in to actually understand the key features of your product before they read the reviews. So um, again, a massive selling point of focusing on your description and not just rushing it to put in a big block of text that no one's going to read. So how do we actually do this? Well, HTML code is very, very simple. Um, and unfortunately, Amazon don't allow like really complex code. They only allow a few simple things. So to go through what they allow, Amazon allows you to make text bold. They allow you to make it italic. They allow you to make it underlined and they allow you to put breaks in your text. So it's not just one big paragraph. You can break it up and put spaces between the text and you can also copy and paste in emojis. Um, it's up to you whether you want to do that or not. But again, it's something you can really draw attention to your product. So for example, if you had a product that you wanted to say the key feature was um, great for good weather, or you could say it was um, waterproof or any like kind of gym within that, you can find an emoji um, that kind of demonstrates being like a raining or a sun or like any of these kind of things that are just going to kind of bring more life to your product listing rather than it just being text. Um, if you don't already have A plus content, um, it can really, like I said, just bring that product description to life. So this is how you actually do um, these certain things like make it bold, make it italic, um, underline, all these types of things. The code is here on the screen for you to use. So if you wanted to make your text bold, then you'd first have to use the angled bracket thing, a B and the angled bracket thing a different way, put your text in the middle, and then to end it off, you'd have to do the exact same thing again. You'd have to put a dash in front of the B and that ends the text being in bold. Straight after that, you can start writing as normal and the text won't be bold anymore. And that basically goes the same for any HTML code you're doing. It's very straightforward when you think italic is I, underline is U, bold is B, and it's the exact same um, kind of theory. You start off with the pointed bracket, the U, the pointed bracket, and you end it the exact same way, but just including a dash before the letter at the end. And that's basically how you do it. It's, it's very, very simple. And the break to start a new line is exactly the same. You have um, a pointed bracket B, pointed bracket B the other way, and to end it is a pointed bracket B R, and then the pointed bracket again. So that one is the only one that doesn't actually include a dash. Now, if you wanna see exactly what this would look like if I put it into a sentence, um, then this is how that would parry out. So we have this paragraph, we'll show you exactly what HTML code can do. Using HTML code in your listing will make it really stand out to your customers. What do you think? Do you like it or love it? And you can see on the right exactly how this will plan out with all that HTML code put in. And when you're creating your listing, the image or the text on the left is how it's going to look in Cell Essential in your product description. It's going to look all like together and all bunched up and just loads of bits of code everywhere. But when you actually look at your product listing, when you open it on Amazon and scroll down, this is what it will look like in real life to the customer. So it's not actually going to look like that in your product description in Amazon in Cell Essential, but it will to the customer. And that's the, that's the thing that matters really. So what I'd recommend to you when you're trying to make your HTML code is do it and then check it on Amazon because sometimes you can miss out um, the like dash at the end and it doesn't actually do it or there can be little faults little issues places where you haven't ended the bold or the italic or you haven't actually included um two breaks so what i mean there is that if you want to actually go to the line below and then actually create a gap between two bits of text so you can see here from like the first sentence on this side you've got html code can do and you've got an actual break like gap underneath that before the next line starts you need to do break break because the first break goes to the line underneath, the break after that creates another line, which then in turn creates the gap. So you need to keep checking these things on Amazon in real time of what the customer will see to see if it's actually working properly, because a lot of times you can make mistakes and errors. It's very easy when there's just that much text and code 
in one place. Now, as I promised, the top tip that I use for my product description is actually including um, just a sentence at the bottom or at the top, just saying that your company name is a family owned and run UK business based in the UK, which it is, is there's nothing like wrong with you saying that, but some of your competitors might not be. They might be um, like German sellers. They might be some other um, like European country selling in the UK, which you see quite a lot, especially German sellers selling in the UK. Um, all those are just not people doing that, not people putting that in the description, which hopefully could give you the edge, even if you include it in one of your bullet points. Um, if you don't have that many things to talk about in your bullet points or maybe have it in one of your images that a like, British um, um, flag or something, just to show that you are a British company. And often people actually want to buy from you more if you show that someone wants to support British businesses. So that can help you get an extra few sales. There's no harm putting in your product description. There's like normally no one's ever really going to hit the target or the limit of the amount of text they can put in the product description. So if you want to, it's a very easy thing to do. Uh, and it's just an extra bit that could help you get those extra few sales. If it does nothing, it does nothing, but there's no harm in putting it there in the first place. So something I would definitely recommend doing um, if you're looking to sell on Amazon. And on that note, if you are watching this video and you're still here, thank you for watching. And obviously you are someone who is interested in selling on Amazon. So if you want to learn how to do that step by step from start to finish with my personal support, check out the AZ Academy, the first thing in the description. I guarantee you will not be disappointed. I look forward to seeing you in there. Thanks for watching this video. Subscribe to the channel, hit the bell notification, the like button, leave comments below on what you thought of the video, any suggestions, anything like that. I really do appreciate it. I'll see you in the next video.